Hey, welcome back. So we're coming back with another one of these who to invest into videos. And this time we have the staves. And this one's going to be a bit different this time around because unlike a lot of the other weapon types where they have all sorts of other gimmicks going for them, staves for the most part pretty much do all the same things. So it's really just going to be a matter of class comparison this time around rather than individual units because all of them don't have any singular PRF that they can work with, mainly because they're all 5-star locked. And really it just boils down to the archetype, because for the most part they all have access to the same skills, but there are some differences here and there, and we will discuss those. So, that's what we're going to do today, and we'll be going in individual order by class, so infantry, flyers, cavalry, and armors. And at the end I'll just give my opinion on which one is the best archetype to invest into currently. And yeah, we may as well just get started with the infantry. Infantry units are generally known for having really good skill accessibility, which is still the case here. However, comparatively to a lot of other units, including flyers, it's not as big of a pro, but it's still worth highlighting, especially if you do want to make them into a combat unit, for example, because it can still use stuff like null follow-up and all the like. Whereas every other archetype really can't do anything in that regard. Even still, they do have access to quite a bit of skills, so if they wanted to go into combat or they wanted to act supportively, they can do both. However, I do find that overall their combat prowess is pretty mediocre because at the end of the day, even with access to a good amount of skills, a lot of it's just going to boil down to how far you can attack and just your skill accessibility. And while infantry do have good amounts of skill accessibility, comparatively to cavalry and flyers in this regard, I would argue they have a bit better access, especially when it comes to the A slots where they can use catch, which is just a way better skill for scaling stats in my opinion. But unlike the cavalry and flyers, they have more BST to work with, so if they wanted to do something a bit more supportively that takes advantage of their res stat or their HP stat, then they can do that way better than the other two archetypes because they have more stats to work with. And since refining staves don't grant any HP, that's actually a pretty decent pro. And overall, the infantry are pretty decent, but I wouldn't say they're necessarily the best. In terms of just infantry builds, I find that you're really just best off doing anything with support. In terms of combat, a lot of them don't really have the best offensive stat line as is, so they may not even be that good in combat anyway. And for what it's worth, they do have access to quite a fair bit of skills that would allow them to act more supportively than maybe some of the other archetypes, depending on the role you want to go into, of course. So for example, if you wanted to run someone with Pulse Tie and Cancel Control, you could do that over any other archetype. Although the cavalry can use Pulse Ties, they won't have nearly as much HP as their infantry counterparts. Or if you wanted to take advantage of their res, well usually they have a lot more res to work with, so you can run sabotages with any sort of sacred seal. And you can also pair it up with any sort of C skill, including infantry null follow. There is infantry speed tactic, which does hamper its viability a bit. But because this doesn't require any sort of tactic requirement, you can literally just bring this and put this on any sort of infantry unit, which is always a boon. And overall, you can still use these units for combat, but I find that it's just going to be really, really lackluster comparatively. As such, I do think the best thing you can do with them is just stick with support. Next, we have the Stave Flyers, and in my opinion, they're probably some of the strongest in their archetype, mainly because of all the stuff they can do. For example, they have all sorts of access to skills, they have really good support synergy, and they have really good combat and range, mainly because they are ranged flyers. And normally a ranged flyer isn't exactly the best when it comes to combat because they lack an assortment of optimal B slots, but for someone like Scion Nana, for example, who's actually our only easily accessible stave flyer, she can actually get away with a lot. For example, if you wanted to use her as a support unit, you could stack up Palm Staff with rings and debuff the foe for a good amount of stats, and that in and of itself already has a really good amount of support synergy. You could give her infantry speed tactic with a sabotage or a sudden panic, and that's also really, really good. And again, she does have her solid combat with being a flyer, as she can basically warp really, really easily, especially if you were to use something like Attack Speed Oath 4, which grants her the Order's buff, which is already really, really convenient. Or you could always use Aerobatics. But regardless of which road you go into, I would argue that the Stay Flyers are probably some of the most flexible in their category. The only thing they will lose out to is stuff with follow-up prevention because they won't be able to get as much damage out, but if you're going to keep them as a support anyway, then it's not really going to be as big of a deal. And in terms of support, I would argue they have a bit more flexibility because of the fact that they could park behind any sort of bulwark or obstruct unit, or even run a melee specialist with far safe support, inflict a bunch of debuffs with attack speed rain and palm staff, and then run sudden panic with HP skills, and they should be acting really, really well. 
as Bulwark or Melee Specialist support, which is really nice. Of course, if you want something a bit more detached from allies, you can run something like Grand Scratcher, which grants Quick and Pulse to the unit with the highest attack at the start of turn 1, which is a really good weapon, as well as running Stillwater with Sabotage Attack or any other sabotage you really want, and an infantry speed tactic for the no follow-up effect and attack tactic. So you could just visibly buff your allies, debuff the foe, and then grant an assortment of external buffs, which is really nice. And as I mentioned earlier, I do think that when it comes to combat prowess, that the Flyers do have a bit of an edge because of all the skills they have access to, including catches and reins and holds, which is really convenient. And saves are usually locked out of a lot of good combat prowess skills, but the ones that they can have access to, especially for the Sacred Seal, does help out in quite a bit of regard. But in terms of just staves that boost attack and speed during combat, we don't really have a lot of those, so you may as well just run something like Serpentine Staff. And I can't emphasize enough that if you are looking for a solid healer to build in the 3 and 4 star pool, consider any healer that is a flyer. Although right now that's only Nana. Next we have the Cavalry Units, who basically do the same thing as the Flyers. They have a really solid range because they can move up to 3 spaces, meaning that their combat could also be really good, assuming they also have the stat line for it. Like, Silk right here doesn't really have a good offensive stat line, but I just put her here because, well, she's a Cav, so whoop de doo And because she is a Cav, she does have access to the likes of Trace, and Flyer Zoo also have access to the likes of Trace, but getting it off is going to be so much more difficult because it doesn't have any remaining plus one onto it. At meanwhile, the Cavs can always extend two spaces and then run away with one afterward, which is really, really good. The only thing that the Cavs do suffer from in this regard is their supportive capabilities, and while they can still mimic a few things that the infantry and flyers can do, the amount of skills they have access to comparatively is just significantly less. And as a result, I don't really think they're that great at supportive capabilities. You can have like a combat support-esque thing, where you run something like Serpentine Staff or Pain with Double Savage Blow, and then run away afterward. But that's really the extent you're really going to get when it comes to support, and as a result, I don't really think they're really that great in that regard. Especially if there are instances where if they go up against stuff like Medius, who could just prevent out-of-combat chip damage, which can be a bit of a pain if you do have to bring them. But of course, you can still make them into a combat unit, because they still have access to the likes of lulls, catches, and menaces, which is still pretty decent for what it's worth, especially if you were to use them on an Aether Raid's defense setting. But again, I feel like the only thing they really have going for them is their combat, and if you really wanted someone that could do a mix of both, the infantry and flyers are going to be a bit better. But in terms of just overall combat, I find that the cavalry are probably the strongest that we have currently. Which is why you could argue that the cavalry are maybe a bit better than the infantry, as they can both still run support. But the differences in support versus combat is definitely going to be a bit more staggering. And finally, we have the armor staves that don't really do much outside of just savior stuff. Which, to be fair, is a lot of what armors do nowadays, outside of just pure exceptions like Gale Force or Assault Troop or whatever the case may be. But because the majority of them are locked to save your stuff, they will need a good amount of skills to work with. And the problem with armor staves in particular is that they lack a good amount of special and skill accessibility. So for example, they can't run any sort of damaging or defensive special. In terms of defensive specials, they always have Miracle, but they still can't run stuff like Sacred Cow or Pavis or whatever the case may be. Which means they also can't run stuff like Hardy Fighter, which is also a big bane, especially if you are looking to act as a far save. Because units like her will get completely shredded by units that have any sort of armor effectiveness otherwise. And making her into a near save is probably not the best idea anyway because she just doesn't function that well in that regard. And if anything, being a staff unit is what holds her back the most because she just lacks all sorts of skills to use. She could still use an assortment of fighter skills, she could run double distance defense or defense rest unity or whatever the case may be, but if there's anything with armor effectiveness on the field, chances are she's just going to go down. And in my opinion, that's just really, really bad. Especially since she can't really do anything in combat considering she just doesn't have the best stats or access to specials to begin with. But if you did want to use her as a far save, she does have access to two pretty decent staves in Observant Staff and Staff of Tribute. Observant Staff grants Spectrum 6 and the Dull Effect during combat, which is really nice. And you can still run any fighter skill and far save. Preferably, you just want to stack up defense and res as much as possible, so at the very least, she could take hits when she needs to, because that's really the main goal when it comes to far saves, or any saves nowadays. And if you want to maximize that potential, you're probably better off running Staff of Tribute, because it does grant stats during combat to her defense and res, and it heals her after combat. So with the likes of Defense Res Ideal and Slick Fighter, 
she can't really be debuffed and she's always going to get a huge amount of stats going for her during combat. And really outside of that, she's not really going to be doing much. And that's fine because as a savior unit, you're really just there to protect your allies. But in terms of combat, she's really, really weak. And if you already have other far safe candidates, I would much rather recommend those over Alyssa. But she could still do relatively okay with it. However, in terms of my overall rankings, I believe that the flying staves are probably the best ones that we have currently because they have really good hybrid nature and what they can accomplish. If you want them for support, they can do that the best. If you want them for combat, they may not necessarily be better than the calves, but they do have access to all the warp stuff, which is really, really nice. After that, I would probably say infantry and cavalry are about on the same level. Infantry do have a bit better access to supportive skills, but cavalry do have a bigger range, which can be beneficial depending on what you're really trying to accomplish. If you want something that's a bit more combat focused, the cavalry are definitely a bit better, but if you want something that's a bit more supportive in nature, the infantry are better. And then as far as the armors are concerned, I would say they are the weakest in that regard. But saviors are still really good for what they are, so I wouldn't necessarily write it off too much. And who knows, maybe in the future we'll get something that helps them out in that role. But for now, I would definitely say flyers followed by infantry and cabs followed by armors. And if you did have to build any stave, I would probably recommend Scion Nana. Otherwise, just pick any sort of stave that has a good allocated stat line for what you're trying to accomplish. And that's really about it when it comes to staves overall. If you want to see more videos like this, Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll make the next decision on what who to invest into video I'll do next. But until next time, I'll see you later.